I want you to imagine that you have a portion of some graph on a piece of paper in front of you, and that this graph is cut off at the x-axis. If we spin this graph around the y-axis, it will outline a shape. Can you see what that shape is? To get a better idea of what's going on, let's follow a single point on its journey around the y-axis. It just makes a circle. In fact, any point that we choose to follow will just make a circle, since the graph is actually spinning in a circle around the y-axis. Now take a look at the path of the entire graph as it spins. It looks like a dog bowl with a hole in the bottom. My question is, what is the volume of this three-dimensional shape? Before we answer that, let's follow a thin rectangle as it spins around the y-axis. If you're thinking that this looks like the setup for Riemann sums, you are absolutely correct. Unlike the previous video on disks, this rectangle actually traces out a cylinder, which is just a fancy term for the side of a soda can. And if we follow a different rectangle, we just get a different cylinder. Here's a look at all the different thin cylinders we could get by following the path of a spinning rectangle. This may give you some insight into how we will formulate a systematic way to calculate the volume of this entire solid shape. If we had a bunch of different sized cylinders, which were all insanely thin, we could cram them into this shape and add up all their volumes to approximate the volume of the entire solid. And of course, the thinner our choices for cylinders, the better our volume approximation would be. Time to tackle the math happening behind the idea. We will first find the volume of a single cylinder. These are also called cylindrical shells or just shells for short. The volume of a super thin shell is going to be the base times the height times the circumference of that cylinder. I'm actually lying a little bit here. I want to see if you can figure out what my lie is. And actually, the thinner these shells get, the less I'm lying. So that's good because these shells do get crazy thin, so it's totally okay. Let's call the base dx to indicate how incredibly small the base becomes. The height is y. And if we call the radius of our cylinder r, then the circumference is 2 pi r. To get our variables in terms of x, we will replace y with f of x, since the graph is y equals f of x. And we will replace the radius with x, since it's measuring the horizontal distance from the y-axis out to the graph. Rewriting this gives an expression for the volume of a single shell, or cylinder, in terms of x only. Here's a quick reminder of how all those shells fit together to approximate the volume of the entire solid. Once we know the volume of one shell, we're in business to calculate the volume of all the shells added together. Use our sigma notation to indicate we are adding these volumes as we fit more and more shells in this solid shape, meaning the number of shells goes to infinity, you see that they must get thinner and thinner in order to fit. This will give us our desired volume. At this point, you should recognize this as being equivalent to an integral. We ditch the limit and sigma for the integral sign, leaving our volume formula under the integral and indicating where we are starting and stopping. As an example, if our graph went from 1 to 2 along the x-axis, and we had a formula for the graph, f of x equals negative x squared plus 3x minus 2, then we would be able to calculate the exact volume of our solid. You can pull the 2 pi out in front of the integral and distribute the x. As practice, evaluate this integral to find the exact volume of pi over 2 cubic units.